That's the only way that Edgeworth Senpai could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who the two men on the boat are. Edgeworth and the murderer. <laughs> Pardon? Edgeworth, Edgeworth and, the and the murderer. Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer. Moida? After the moiterer killed Robert Hammer at a Robert Hammond, Robert Robert whatever the hell his name is at 1150. He assumed the guise of Mr. Jack Hammer and met Edgeworth. You are losing the plot. Are you serious? Dead serious. Yes, Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the moiterer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all this. Ludicrous. Mr. Wrong. Tell us the name of the murderer, then. The murderer's name right, it's... I have no clue. I don't know the murderer's name. You you don't know. I, I know. Take up my job. We can just stop sniffing glue. I know. Ah, again, you waste my time. What do I look like, the cop? I don't know because he never told us. I ain't gonna get my daughter to give you a good whipping because you're not worth my time. Wait, what? The moiterer is the caretaker of the boat shop. That old man, he played one. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop. I thought he said it was a noodle stand. Where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake, then. Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot somebody in the face? There's a law, you see. May I suggest that the real scene of the crime was not on a boat? What? The Lonely Island will be so disappointed. Where did the murder take place? The, the shop. The boat shop, yep. <laughs> Here, of course, the boat shop, where he lives. That seems not a wise choice. That way he could meet with the victim without anyone seeing. Do you have any proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Sias' testimony, if you will. Huh? That night, he was out on the lake in a boat, searching for something. Gordy. He finds it and returns the boat. Then, just as he's starting... To head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor. Even though he was wearing headphones at the time. 
In other words, the gunshot was very, 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 very close by. Wait, was it mentioned that he wore headphones? Yes. Yep. Okay. And where would that be if he had just returned a boat? A boat shop. Mr. Wrong. What happened that night on Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Yes, your honor. So one day, little Billy was on the playground, and he heard a phrase he'd never heard before. You're in contempt of court. I'm in contempt of a lot of things. <laughs> Nick, are you sure about this? Uh, if I have the skills and inclination and know where to find the footage, I'll probably stick, stick a scene of the... The trial from Transformers the movie in there. I'm never sure. Let's double down. I think if I start all the way back at the very beginning, and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. Jake, no, you sucker! This was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Sias heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's smelly coat. He became Robert Hammond. <laughs> then he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went into the middle of the lake. And who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wrong? The shot caper. Of course, it was the Moiterer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edgeworth Senpai on purpose. Wait a minute. Yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, details, details, uh, the at, m, at, m. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moments you announce your explanations is the moments you lose. And you lose, you die. So tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. To create a witness. I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The moiterer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the leg. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the moiterer waits a bit, and he fires again. Then... The moiterer jumps from the boat himself. Leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. I see. I think, to someone looking from the edge of the lake, it would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The moiterer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. 
That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Mm -mm. Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop. Then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body. And threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. Bailiff. First, club that man again, and then bring out the witness from before. <laughs> I, I was hoping for something like this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life, but club that man also works. The boat shop caretaker, quickly. Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said. Yes. Well, out with it, man. Why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes, um, hmm. several days ago I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. Hmm. Your Honor, sir! Bailiff, have you finished clubbing that man that keeps asking for sandwiches? <laughs> Not yet! Yeah, we're, we're, we're conducting a trial here. Please stay quiet. Well, first of all, I came by to ask for a section, but... Sandwich. But also, I wanted to let you know the witness has disappeared. He isn't at the boat shop, either. But you failed at your job. You had one job, man. Well, I was clubbing that guy who asked for a sandwich, and I realized I wanted a sandwich. What should I do? Oh, find the man, quickly. We can't allow him to get away. Can I get a sandwich? No! <laughs> Damn it. Yes. Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. Mm. The search warrant has already been issued. I believe that's the judge's job, you jackass. Shut up. It could be done by the police as well, so... It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Whack! Just who is that boat shop caretaker? Who was that masked man? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. 
I want him, and I want to know who he is. And what type of sandwich he likes. Very well. Court is adjourned. Okay. Hey, Nick, you did it! Yeah... But I want a sandwich. <laughs> At least we got out from under that guilty verdict- Hey, did somebody in here say they wanted a sandwich? N no? Put, put that club away, please. <laughs> I thought I heard somebody say they wanted a sandwich. No, nobody in here wants a sandwich! I've got my eye on you. I want to say sandwich. <laughs> Get back here. <laughs> Larry, that was something else. Also, are you okay? You're sweating a lot, Nick. <laughs> Even Von Kara didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. You should be grateful of him. Sure, once I sifted through his very unique testimony. But he saved us, as he does. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. It's almost like we're in some sort of video game or something. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth Senpai. Um, Mr. Edgeworth. Eh? Did did you say something? Paint. I mean, I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. I <laughs> you could try never to smile. smile. Relax. You know, <laughs> nothing. I'm sorry, but I fear it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. I hear they make creams for that now. I'm still talking about the trial, right? Keep look, Quit looking at my pants, man. I don't oh, know okay. whether or not to tell you. I am your lawyer. <laughs> that doesn't mean you need to look at my pants, so... They're nice pants. Think... Yeah, there's so little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but, um... Is it your shirt? Please tell me it's your shirt. <laughs> Damn it, I was going to make that joke. <laughs> I know the tropes! <laughs> I can't make up my mind whether someone should live or die here, so... <laughs> what is this about, Edgeworth? Please tell me it's about taking off your shirt. <laughs> it, it's a nightmare I've had. Damn it! A memory of a crime that I committed. A sexy crime you committed? A memory of a moida. Damn it! <laughs> I mean, I'm sure if he takes off his shirt, that would kill some people. Yeah. <laughs> so much instantaneous blood loss via the nose. 
this. Vicky. <clears throat> What was Mr. Edgeworth talking about? <coughs> ah, yes. Flashback of something that was said literally ten A memory seconds. of a crime that I committed... De, 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 Fifteen de, de, years de. ago! <laughs> Mama... I killed a man. Ba -da 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 -da. Do you really think Mr. Edgeworth killed? I don't believe it. Not Edgeworth, Senpai. Also, why didn't he take off his shirt? He was in court. <laughs> Some painful memory has been troubling him recently. But he'd never take someone's life. Unless it was mine. Repeatedly. With a shovel. Of course. Sup, wretches! Uh, and then there's this jackass. <laughs> what did you think of my performance today? Adam sold it in the aisles. Hi, Mia. <laughs> Doing? Me? I'm a child! Oh, uh, yes, I, I do remember feeling faint. Right on! Tell me the truth. It was love at first sight, right? Right, Sparrison! I'm. Again, I'm a child. You are so hot right now, Sias. Yeah. My heart definitely skipped a beat or two. I think you can do better than that. Come on. I served Edgy Senpai in there, dude. Edgy. You guys are bound for me! Bow before your hero! The end cannot come soon enough. Bless you! Bless you. See, I don't sneeze like a kitten! It was still cute. Hey! So... It was a big kitten. Yes. <laughs> a tiger cub. Hey. <laughs> so yes, today's trial. Sias, you really helped out in the trial today. Red. If you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Mr. Edgeworth would have been found guilty. Surprisingly. Ha 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 ha! Was Sirsenek the butch kick caretaker? Pretty sus. But is she ain't off the hook yet. Way to spoil the mood, Larry. Hey. I was just a guy in the audience, you know? <laughs> but from sitting uh, edgy, so pretty uh, edgy. I mean, can you really know he's telling the truth about that night? Hmm. I. Don't know. 
I think I want a sandwich. But what I do know is... I'm going to believe in you two until the end, because Animu! And friendship. Sure. Listen, who else? You mean me, right? Ah, he means me. Yeah, right, Sparrison. Yeah, you, Sias. Not me. Uh, way to kick the puppy. Why you, Larry? Look at my nipple eyes. <laughs> well, I'm me exactly. Silent treatment. Ick. Why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? I mean, he's changed recently. True. When we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? You didn't know him back then when he was a small. Back when he wanted to become a defense attorney slash ballerina. Was was that when you two were classmates? Yes, in grade school. They saved me. Edgeworth Senpai. And Sias. They saved me and I'll never forget it. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know? What? Hey, hey, Larry, what's he talking about? Huh? Um. I don't know. Yeah. He totally forgot. Nothing at all suspicious about that. Hmm. Okay, Nick. Out with it. I'm going to hear the story today, and that's final. So, so it all started when I was out on the playground, and I heard... <laughs> no. It's a long story, don't, so hang don't, in there. Don't fucking start. <laughs> don't you dare. It was the very end of third grade. <laughs> hey, hey, Yoko, would you mind holding on to this bat for me? Right <laughs> <laughs> here. <laughs> I was on trial, a class trial, because I heard a phrase I'd never heard before. You. <laughs> class trial? The funny self piece off of this going to be a murder. <laughs> there have been several already. You remember Sias, spring into the third grade. The kid in our class got his lunch money stolen, so he said a phrase we'd never heard before. Stop, just stop, please. Our school was really small. Every month, kids would bring in an envelope with money for lunch from home. Oh, I see. 